the Brenner Brothers. Hi, Gene. Hi, Gene. Another Billy, show. Billy, 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 Another show. Billy, 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 Billy. I'm going to get, I need to write you a theme or something. Yeah, you do. Definitely. Every time we speak, you should sing my theme. D I L L Y. Come on. Billy. Billy. B I L L Y. Billy. <laughs> hey, look at all the people who are very excited to uh, see our lovely ladies today. Glorious writer. Nick Kramer, Henry Greenberg, or Henri Greenberg. Christopher uh, Smiliano, Leon Jesse. Rivera, our America's Got Muppet Talent champion. Jesse Oliver, Scott Joy. There's Scott. He's always with us, old Scotty boy. Janet P. Marshall Grover. Marshall Grover, Wally Cunningham. Okay, here we are. What are we going to do? All right, business. Uh, Go to theberettabrothers.com. Sign up for the news. <laughs> Stupid. You know what? Don't bother. Yeah, don't go. Yeah, do us a big favor. You know? Stay go away. to somebody else's website. Figure don't out bother. another website to go to. You want to waste yeah, our yeah. time? Get your Muppet shit somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now what? And don't go to my website either. Yeah, jeanberetta.com. <laughs> 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 all right, we're getting a little blue. Yeah, well, all right. Okay. Uh, so, what a way to bring in our glorious ladies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I started that off well. Um, yes, let's just let's just do that. Let's just bring them on. Oh, though, wait. Let's mention uh, the 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 the. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Next week, as you know, is our Christmas episode. We're going to have Santa Claus, and we're going to have our Muppet Christmas trivia. And we the real got Santa Claus is coming. Yes, and we've got two contestants. How do you, are, you sure are you sure it's the real Santa Claus? I've checked it, Billy. I asked Rod Rudolph, and he, he verified it. And we've got, we're going to mention our two winners right now, and then we're going to announce them at the end of the show in case the two winners have amnesia or something. Uh, yeah, or, or, or aren't watching. You ready, gang? Go. The two contestants for our next Muppet trivia contest are... Michael Moroz, if that's how you pronounce it, M R O Z. Yes. Michael Moroz, congratulations. Hey. He'll be going up against Joe Deadly. Ooh, Deadly as in dead? Hear good things. No, Deadly. Oh, Deadly. Deadly. Yeah. Joe Deadly. So it's going to be Michael Moore. Mor Michael, Michael Moore. Moore. <laughs> and Joe Deadly. He's going to expose us. Uh, Michael Moroz <laughs> and Joe Debley. Joe Debley. Going head to head on. And Santa Debley. Claus. Maybe we'll ask him a couple of trivia questions as well. Yeah, I, I hope. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know but before we get to all that, we've got a show we right here in front of us. And we've got three glorious ladies of puppetry, the founders waiting in the wings. Would you like to introduce them, Bill? Uh, yes, I would. Do they need a theme song? Uh, well, why don't you go ahead and try it? I'll improve. Yeah, see go if ahead. we've got a little song for each one. Maybe okay, yeah, first up, a puppeteer for 25 years, the new Moki in the reboot of the Jim Henson Company's Fraggle Rock, and so much more that we're going to find out about. Here's Donna Kimball. Hello, Donna guys. Donna Kimball. It's the Beretta Blues. Why you have a theme coming? Donna Kimball. She's so nimble. Oh. Walking on a thimble. That's Donna Kimball. And currently in Vancouver, working on a new show for Nickelodeon, a Groundlings Sunday company and Second City Conservatory alumni, and so much more, which we're going to learn about. Colleen Smith. Hello. Colleen Smith. She's not a myth, <laughs> and she'll plead the fifth. That's Colleen Smith. <laughs> oh, my God. These are great. And, Thank you. I our, and our third founder, starting at the Center for Puppetry Arts in Atlanta, performing many principal roles for Sesame Street, the Muppet Studios, and the Jim Henson Company. And yes, so much more that we're going to learn about. <laughs> Alice Deneen. Hi, guys. 
Hello. 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 Hooray. Hello. Have you ever seen Alice, Denise? Oh, Thanks. that's more like that's a theme good. poem. I want a song. <laughs> Alice Deneen, gosh, she's awful clean. That's our Alice Deneen. <laughs> no, wait, the obvious theme song for you guys, is, I know we're supposed to cancel Michael Jackson, but Billie Jean must be your theme song. Oh, oh. Ooh, good one. Oh, Never? Gosh, you one. can't tell I'm moonwalking. Uh, okay. <laughs> Billie wow. Jean have got a podcast. <laughs> oh, no. Please stop. Everyone just please. <laughs> yeah. These songs are really good. Yeah. Hi, so, ladies. How are you? Hi. How are you guys? Nice. Thank you for coming and doing this. Thank you for having us on. It's very kind. We uh, obviously want to talk about uh, the glorious ladies of puppetry and what that's all about. It's um, it's hard when we have groups like I never know where to start or who to start with. I mean, what, what's, I know, what's the first project? Can you guys remember the first project where all three of you connected? Do you know what that might be? Oh, Puppet Up classes? Do you yeah. think it was Puppet Up? Yeah. Probably, yeah. But the oh, only thing I've yeah. worked on with you, Alice, is Happy Time, right? Right, a so little that's bit Nurse and Ed, a little bit. Nurse and Ed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess... So we all were to Jeanette, so that was the that's like the only broadcast thing we were all on together, right? I think yeah. so. Well, yeah. Donna I mean, and I did a terrible game show years ago. That uh -huh. was probably the first thing we worked on. <laughs> was Which was that? The uh, it was Late Night Liars. A wonderful right. uh, monkey puppet was in it, designed by Gene. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I learned yeah. yesterday, but the show uh -huh. itself was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> it oh, was. Really? We, uh, we were uh, comrades in arms there. Yes. That was yeah. in, was that in England? No, that's the other uh, yeah, that, puppet game show I've done. I've done two puppet game shows. <laughs> what was the oh, other one? Late Night Liars. Okay. Don't do yeah. it. The other one was called uh, That Puppet Game Show. Got uh, it. And that yeah. was in England, right? Yeah, that was for the BBC. Mm -hmm. Right. Can right. you just do the? Can you just do your character voice for me from Late Night Liars? Because I loved both of them. Oh, it was oh. just. Um, she was just it like, was like a, valley a valley girl. girl. Yeah. yeah, she would just. I, I think I had a whole thing about. Um, oil spillage right and i was like it's spilling in the ocean and they clean up the ocean and I, well yeah sort of that <laughs> cashmere ramada i got to assist yeah. colleen when we were doing promos and she just improvised the whole thing and i was just you know when you're improvising and laughing at the I mean, you're <laughs> assisting and laughing at the same time you try yeah. not to make the little arms <laughs> yeah yeah and not make any noise on their microphone right, right you're trying right. to and look you can't see because you're laughing and it, yeah and, and I did Shelly Oceans. Oh, she was the, the, yeah. the, the Brett, Steve Brett, Brett, Brett Summers character. So <laughs> oh, right, Brett Summers. Yeah. Yeah. was really, really heavy with the wig and the jewelry, and the, she was, she was like, Wait, it's biggie she, heavy, Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. Black oh, was she? Yeah. She was heavy character. Yeah, this was Shelly. Yeah, Brian, this. Brian Henson hates that puppet. The Shelly? Shelly Oceans, yeah. She was, uh, she was in Puppet Up Rotation, and he would always just go, yeah, don't use that puppet. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally they just they took her out but i'll always she'll always be near and dear to me jelly ocean her mouth looks like a difficult thing to uh yeah to handle. it was yeah a lot yeah. of foam there a lot of overdone lips right right <laughs> but so you guys we were, i was trying to pull a lot of photos and things but there are so many projects that you've all worked together with so i've just pulled up a lot of shows that you can all throw in comments whenever you like because you share some okay. of the same credits well, and things. Gene, what if we what if we do this? Can we show a, a clip from the Glorious Ladies of Puppetry? Can we show one of those? Yeah. And yeah. Maybe to, let's let's talk about that because that is something you're obviously all doing together right. uh, yeah. now. But then yeah. we can pick some photos and things to look at as we go and just just should we just start with episode one? one? Sure. Yeah. Let's let's mention yeah. Two. Let's mention yeah. to everybody that you can see all of this at golp.us, glop.us. And there are five episodes out there now. There's a sixth one in the works, and they're all really hysterical. Here's the opening one. No, you quit it. Quit it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. No, get it. 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 Get
What have I always said a Lady Trinity of the Veils girl never does? Exert themselves. Wonderful. Otherwise, we are all what? Animals. Yes. I know a story about girls who became animals. An all-girls school crashed on a deserted island. Oh, oh no. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're all gonna die! Relax. As long as we all keep our heads, we'll be fine. Scared one? Start a fire with your glasses. Hysterical one? Cut down that bamboo to make a shelter. Wild card one? Yeah? Go and search for food. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we can trust her, sensible one. Don't be hysterical. <laughs> Your character names are kind of ruining the story arc, don't you think? You're ruining the story arc. Girls? Time passes. I am a god! Oh, oh, oh. The island is my seat! The birds are my eyes! The wind is my counselor! The sun is my best friend! I thought I was your best friend. Silence, best friend one! I can have two best friends. <laughs> the end. That's the end? What happened in the middle? You skipped the best part. No, I didn't. The end is the best part. How? She had two best friends! Animals. <laughs> We'd be alright if the wind was in our sails. We'd be alright if the wind was in our sails. We'd be alright if the wind was in our sails. <laughs> who, who, who wrote the song? That the song at the end? An old uh, yeah. ditty I looked up in, um, what's it called? Public. It, what was the, oh, Public Domain. Public Domain. Yeah, public yeah. domain. And then Don. Did you guys sing it? It's a sea shanty. And that's all me. It's actually all me singing. Oh, oh wow. beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Beautiful. Uh, that, the whack gets me every time. <laughs> <laughs> Technically perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. And you know, shopping for, I, and you probably know this, Bill, shopping for slap sounds and oh, right. sound effects places yeah. is so fun. And it's yeah. almost as fun as shop, shopping for fart sounds. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, everyone Button it with a fart joke and it just, I'm on board. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what's so, really fascinating about this is that they've all, they're all being made now during the pandemic. So everybody's shooting their parts separately and it's being composited in post-production. And you sent me, Donna sent me a lot of behind the scenes photos. Um, I can bring some up. I think I got them in some kind of a sequence if you want to comment on these. But so, how, so, so uh, just before you do that, James, so yeah. I just want to start with what was the, where did this start? How did the three of you decide this is something you want to did somebody come to the others and say, do we want to do this? Were you working together somewhere and you thought we should do something? How, how did it start? Well, Donna yeah. called me, so Donna's how it started. <laughs> All right. Oh, I mean, Alice that's... and I, yeah, Alice and I had worked together last year on Crank Yankers, and we were talking about um, Glop as a thing. We don't know when the name started, isn't that right, yeah. Alice? Yeah, I mean, the name's been kicking around for literally decades because it's a funny acronym, Glop. Right. You know? um, and uh, and oh, many times over the years, uh, we've said, you know, we should make some Glop T-shirts. We should just like, we 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 thought about using that image of of, you know, the we can do it woman from World War II, but with a puppet on her hand. And we're, <laughs> like, we've drawn out different things, and but we've just never even got around to making a t-shirt. But right. then the lockdown happened. Yeah, and I texted Alice and said, you know, should we have like a glop happy hour, just sort of a check-in, how's oh, your right. pandemic going? And, you know, we, that didn't happen. And then the racial uh, protests started in this country uh, right. in the summer, and I reached out to Alice again and thinking, you know, should we should we have a larger conversation about representation in our industry? And mm -hmm. and then um, David Bizarro and Chris Thomas Hayes and Liz Hara did that and did it very well. And then I saw the um, on Quibi the celebrity version of Princess Bride. 
Uh -huh. where all the celebrities shot from their home and they shot oh, yeah. from their home. Yeah. Uh, very super low tech. And I thought, what if, we, what if we shot something? Because at the time I had just done Fraggle Rock, Rock On from my home and it was very oh. Zoom style, you know, all the characters, you know, facing the camera and, you know, yeah. and it was great. So I had the stuff and I knew from social media that all puppeteers were, were shopping for equipment. So everyone was acquiring this stuff. And I thought, well, how could, so I reached out to Alice and said, you want to shoot something? Uh -huh. And she was, she said, yeah. And I said, I, I, I would love for Colleen to write it. And so I called Colleen and said, you want to do this thing? She was like, oh, I thought you just wanted me to puppeteer on it. Yeah, I'll write it. <laughs> Two days later, we met, the three of us met on Zoom. Colleen pitched us about a dozen premise ideas. We chose the campfire stories because we wanted a story and a story. And I said, here's our criteria. Too short to suck. <laughs> get in, make them laugh, get out, and casting right. as many women as possible. Pacey, Pacey, Pacey. I said, this is the Dylan Gale idiots. We love them. They're so funny, oh, yeah. so fast, but we wanted our demographic to be a little younger. We wanted older kids to be able to see, see right. those older girls to see this. Girls, yeah. Oh, this is funny. Right. And uh, two days later, oh, no, once, once we had our premise, Colleen, Two hours later, I swear, had sent us five scripts. And I think over two of them, we ended up using Lady Doctor was one and Lady of the Flies was one. Wow. Yeah. So, and then we were just off to the races. Wow. How fun. Okay. And so I see that one, I don't know who built the puppets, but uh, one of them looks like Louise and it is Louise. <laughs> <laughs> everybody used just the puppet they had. So that was just a puppet Louise had. Oh, yeah. I, oh, so everybody had something or created something that they had. Mm -hmm. Everybody made things they had around the house. I mean, we sent out a few costume pieces and, and, the, and the flicker light bulbs for the fire. But other than that, everyone used what they had. Oh, you shipped yeah. some puppets, didn't you? Papa? I shipped the puppet. She was kind of a, a sleaze puppet to uh, we cleaned her up Allison Mort gave her a makeover and we shipped her to Jen Barnhart um, and then Morgana I lent Morgana that orangutan puppet for the dying patient but other than that yeah everyone used what they had and I I, I love that look I love that the Muppets are just a, a collection of humanoid puppets animal puppets and monster puppets and so right. I was totally fine with I, I we Whatever. don't have an exactly right I, yeah I just, it's, it's just added to the fun of it. Yeah, you don't have to get into saying why they're who they are. They're just a diverse group of whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. Which makes yeah. it fun because you can be a piece of cheese if you want. <laughs> yeah, I love I'm that. I'm disappointed but, there's no cheese in any of these. Episodes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's no, the rejected There you go. So yeah. let me show you. Uh, this, this I imagine, is you're putting storyboards together? Is that what yeah. this is? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was going to storyboard, and then I realized I can't draw. Uh -huh. So I was like, hmm. <laughs> and so I just literally looked around. My, my daughter was away to college, and I just looked around for what I had. So I had this collection of chicken run toys that I gave her for when she went for her immunizations. That was her treat. <laughs> 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 so this obviously I've had those a while because she's a college student now. So, uh, but they're very puppety looking. Uh -huh. So I shot the the scenes within the scenes. Um, so this is me shooting Lady Doctor with uh, the the patient POV shot, and that oh, little right. thing I'm holding is the statue. Right. <laughs> and, and I just using what I had. This is so stupid, but it really worked to sort of convey, you know, so the what, doctors in it. They're in glasses. You you sit them in glasses, right? I sat them in glasses. <laughs> I tried to sit them up on their butts, and they just kept great. falling over. So oh, in glasses. Great. And then, and for the campfire team, I used my daughter's Star Wars Funko, uh, which are not the best because their eyes are giant, and you know. But I just positioned them and just sort of moved the camera, and that way I could get focus. And I just air dropped them. There they are. I just airdropped them to my Mac and did a Google Doc, and it was actually really fast huh. to do mm -hmm. it this way. Right. Um, so you've got your storyboard there, right? Yep, and With sent the them out to and... all the gals so they knew what the shots were, so just to give them some context, because, you know, sure. shooting in a green void, it's it's really, really hard. So this oh, gave everyone a frame of reference. It had to be it really hard. helpful. I mean, it had, there, how else it, can you do it? You're, they've got to know what you're, it's in your head, and everybody needs to be on the same page, right? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, the other great thing was we zoomed. I mean, this is like you can see, like Donna zoom directed, so we could right. watch what was being filmed at the, the same time. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. filmed alone, right, Donna? Or did somebody? No, I think we were there with all of them. Right. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. no one filmed alone. Yeah. At, at least 
I was there for each one, but usually it was Colleen and I there for mm. each one. So here we are shooting. Uh, this is Nicolette shooting with Drew assisting. So look at me, my two laptops. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. Look but having the storyboards on one side and then, you know. And can you, right. can you explain how, um, uh, cause we've been doing this, uh, how the, so you're using an iPhone to shoot cause it's great quality these days, right? Mm -hmm. The iPhone and then setting up the shot for your zoom camera so that you can see what the camera sees, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, we played around with a few different ways, but we really, really just needed to see what the shot was. It was, I just had to see what everyone was doing. So it was a little harder when people were farther away, like for Louise and Amy, Amy shot in Atlanta, Louise shot in London. Mm -hmm. um, once they started rolling, the feed could be kind of steppy and there'd be like a 30 second delay, yeah. a whole 30 wow. second delay. It was crazy, yeah. but we saw just enough to, to make sure that we got what we needed. So yeah, we tried a lot of different things. People would put an iPad up and zoom from the iPad, filming the camera, and then setting up a monitor for themselves. We really tried a lot of different ways. Our home setup, uh, cause we converted my, my daughter's room to a contactless, shooting space because we realized oh, we just need another room in our house wait we have one so people could come <laughs> right. in literally turn right wave at us with our masks on over on the other side of the room turn right have their own bathroom and go straight in oh, where yeah. it was all set up and open uh, turn the ceiling fan off turn the ac off and and we would zoom from the other room so right. about, yeah. most of our la cast shot that way which was great because we were able to control audio and control oh, that's all the really visuals. smart wow yeah yeah Here's so that helped a lot How's the audio? Did you have, do you do a separate source for your audio aside from what the camera sees? Yes, always. Rich is, Rich is the guy. My partner, Rich Prince is, uh, is an editor, but he had all this equipment. We set up a Canon camera to shoot our, um, our, the iPhone screen for right. our, the people who shot with us. And right. so they had a full size monitor there on the floor. Mm. Um, and yeah, just a straight mic going into a recorder and he right. adjusted levels from his studio. Awesome. So yeah, I, it really worked I love, out. I love seeing this breakdown here of <laughs> one of the sets that you built. Here's the outs. This is the uh, initial setup. I imagine here's yeah. the campfire yeah, and it's backyard. <laughs> yeah. And then here it is sh shot and isolated. Well, you, you explain cause you, um, I yeah, want to take us through it. Yeah. yeah, that's just the layer. I mean, we we knew that this would be the hardest thing, but we knew if we could pull off the master shot, we could pretty much do anything. So uh, I didn't even realize until much later. We actually went to Alice's house to pick up some stuff, and it was it was in miniature. Oh, that's her. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's my back yeah. door. But that whole right. setup is miniature. It's actually smaller than the puppets, and I didn't even know that until we were well into this project. It's like you're a magician. <laughs> 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 but our, our plan B, if this didn't work, was to set up a safe outdoor night shoot where we shot with masks on. And that was our that was our plan B if this didn't work. But between mm -hmm. Alice and Rich, it worked. Alice, uh, I'll let you describe this, uh, the fun you and Bennett had. Setting that yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had, uh, well, I had my, my 14 year old son helping me haul pieces of wood and rocks and bags of dry leaves and Pieces cut of cut down trees. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just had a tree cut down, so I saved the pieces. That's uh, you know, I pulled them out of the firewood supply. But um, and then uh, Donna and I had had figured out how to do a you know a flicker bulb from Amazon, um, so that each of the characters would have the same flicker on their yeah. face. Oh, and uh, and so one of those flicker bulbs is actually there inside the circle of stones as well. So there's uh -huh. a long uh, extension cord running all the way back to my house from there. <laughs> and, then, okay. and then Rich put um, Rich put a, a he, he can uh, he put a fire over the top of that, but the flicker bulb is in there, and the little sticks and a hmm. you know, it's a combination of practical and digital effects with the fire. But the light hitting everyone's face is from everyone having one of those bulbs. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and we knew that to build, we knew that we had to build their lower halves somehow. We were thinking, should they have jeans on? And then we thought, you know, they're <laughs> sitting around a campfire. I throw a blanket over my lap. 
So uh, Alice cut up a shirt, it's one shirt that makes all those little laps and that gave us an even line to yeah. for which to trim and make that layer. So then right. the puppets on green screen are just sort of dropped in behind behind mm. that layer. Right. And the flicker bulb is illuminating, not the flicker bulb's illuminating their laps as well, illuminating the blankets. And then each of the puppets shot separately with a flicker bulb on them as well. So the well, lighting ends up matching. And I have to say you did like a good job, like the, the spread on all of them, where it's focused on the middle ones a little bit brighter there. And it kind yeah. of gets a little bit softer as it goes around and yeah. to the yeah. sides. That's that was all. a happy accident, actually. Was it? <laughs> Works wow. great. Actually, it was. Works great. There's, there's no, there's no shot in which there's more than one. There was more than one shot. No two of them are ever together. Right. Um, yeah. Right. So they're all shot individually. And in, in oh, that's out. what I wanted to ask. So for timing, did you like? Did did different people do offlines for other people, or were I you read with everybody? You so, did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and things like, it was really fun to do something like this was super challenging because for Fraggle Rock Rock On, we just read our lines you know, straight to camera. But mm. these, it was so exciting, the thought of taking this further so the characters actually physically intersect. So for example, for Lady of the Flies, the moment they physically intersect is the slap. So we kind of built the timing before and after that point. Right. Um, and so we shot Alice first because her slapping is that right. anchor. And yeah. then we built, coached the other actresses around what Alice did and it ended up working out. So. It's amazing, right? How like your brain and you start to think of like, we're, we've become so used to doing things in a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. All yeah. this puppetry stuff is, you know, forever has been, <laughs> you know, a certain way. You're together, you're assisting each other, you're working off. And now you've got to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we break this up into all these little pieces? And then there are moments there's got to be. I know when we're doing the stuff that we've been doing, it's like, oh, geez, why didn't I, you know? Oh, mm -hmm. we, we should have. <laughs> <you know, laughs> those mm -hmm. little things that make you go, oh God, they should have just looked a little, you know. Um, oh, I, the, I, all I can see is uh, Wick not looking the right way. Like she's oh, like really? a little too lean forward and like looking past. Oh. And I remember the whole time that I was like, Colin, can you straighten up a little bit? Colin, can you straighten up a little bit? It's fine. It's fine. And then looking at it now, I'm so mad. So this is Colleen's oh. character, Wick. Live hand you were performing. That, yes, oh. I'm the only dum-dum who had a live hand puppet that needed to operate. Why is so, that? Oh, I love live hands. And my sister, <laughs> is not a puppeteer, came in and had to be my hand, my assist. Hysterical. And she was like, what is that? Like, she hated it. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> I've recently had Jackson helping me with a few things right handing and uh and actually he's been great. I mean I've been like I can't believe it. He just jumped into it and Yeah. I mean he's doing great. It's it's actually weird. For the Swedish chef, we have the same hands basically. Ooh. Uh, which is uh, odd, you know, that I do the left and he does the right and it's weird. This is Alice's <laughs> character, sensible one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sensible one. And then Donna's character, I don't know if Donna's character comes up in an episode that we we're going to show, but um, this is her character, the chimp. Oh, yeah. was in, I think it's episode journalist. two. <laughs> the the interrupting chimp. chimp. Yeah. Yes. She's great. Made by the great, the great, late, great Dave Fidel. Made that oh. one, actually. Hey, can we show another one? Yeah, why don't yeah. we do that? Yeah, let's All right, and then we'll take some oh, questions wait, actually, from our yeah, viewers. Wait, I just wait. There was one question. I just wanted to. Sorry, wait. Where is it? Uh, uh, this isn't a question, but I just wanted to show you, Gene, just so you know. Uh, this is one of our contestants for our upcoming trivia show. Just realized that they got picked. So congratulations, Michael. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, unfortunately, there weren't any uh, females that wrote in to want to be on this time. So. That's why we got two guys, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're losing. It's true. Last yeah. time we had no females that I saw. <laughs> there really weren't any. Um, so uh, last time our winner was uh, um um oh oh what's her first yeah, name Madison Madison, Madison Mantis she yeah. won yeah she was awesome okay uh, so sorry, Michael Michael you. and uh, Joe will be contacting you during the course of the week so stand yeah. by for that. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at another episode and then we'll look at some questions. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Watch out. 
You're gonna burn your hand off. I'm gonna burn your hand off. Ow! Uh, is there a doctor in the house? I'm gonna be a lady doctor when I grow up. They're just called doctors, Bean. No, I mean I'll be lady doctor. I need 10 cc stat. I believe I may be of assistance. Lady doctor, she's flatlining. We need to biopsy. I never biopsy without a formal introduction. I'm Lady Eugenia Francis Doctor, and you are? Ah! I have the East Island as Doctor! And the Lady Doctor! She has seconds to live! A true lady never rushes, even towards death. Now, Ms. R, point to this figurine and tell me where it hurts. You see, I get all of my medical knowledge from studying statues. A real lady never touches anything. My fingertips have never been used. All right, go on, point to the statue. Now, be a good girl. Yes, yes, you can do it. Oh, you can do better than that. Come, come now, be a dear. She's gone. Don't be so dramatic. It wrinkles the brow. Lady Doctor! Yeah! Oh. I was going to ask who was the nurse. I thought it was Peggy. I yeah. Was Peggy. <laughs> yeah. Funniest straight man. She's the funniest straight man. I just love it. Jen Barnhart. Oh. Yeah. And that was like hearing more gone. Jen Barnhart. Jen's like one of the workingest puppeteers out there. She's yeah. so experienced and so amazing. And for Morgana, I think it was the first time she'd puppeteered on camera, right? She's yeah. a super. Oh. You know, we had the whole range there and just those three characters. And I was just, you know, just they all, they all knocked it out of the park. Wow. Wow. So how many, well, I just before we, you guys all came on, I was asking Donna and I thought we'd try and save it, but how many glorious ladies of puppetry are that out there and how many will get to play with you guys, do you think? Um, we did 20 on this all together, right? On this About line. 20, 22 total wow. by the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, we made a list of everybody we could think of. So about 60. It and was then there's all these 60. people we don't 60. know. Yeah. You we know, kind of just went through people we knew. I hope that with this now we can ask people who don't know us, but whose work we admire, you know, mm -hmm. so we can actually show them what we're doing versus like, hey, do you want to do this, ask this really big favor and you don't know us? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You want to work really hard for no money? Yeah, yeah. favors, right? Just that's for what, the fun. That's what our show is. It's like, yeah. How do you do think you we mind? do this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was yeah. really. It was really important to us to get a nice combination. We we wanted to reach out to our, our, our lady puppeteers of color. We wanted to have newbies who we knew were super talented who hadn't really gotten much of a shot yet to do things, professional right. things on camera, yep. um, and then veterans as well. So we really wanted um, a nice mix and, and we're, we're thrilled. But we have a, a nice long list and we would, uh, so many that we weren't able to get this time that we would love to get next time. And many people have reached out since these episodes have come out. So um, the list is, is and, ever growing. And, and I imagine, right, you're, we're, you're talking about the U.S. and Canada and, right, England and you're, I mean, they're everywhere, right? Oh, yeah, yes. Many of our Dark Crystal friends we'd love to do next yeah. time. Oh, nice. all all please, but there's, you know, all the all of them over there. We made so many, you know, we made so many friends over there we'd love to include. And then but, um, and it also, you know, would have been really easy to cast out and do the whole thing with, you know, veterans that have been doing sure. this for decades, but that's not really the point of what we wanted to do. So, yeah. Yep. Here's, a, here's awesome. a related question from Fergie, our friend, saying, what are some of the joyful, relieving moments you experience from working with predominantly or only women that you don't get on a typical set? Well, men are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really lucky that 
for most of my career, like I starting at the Groundlings, being in the Sunday Company, there was all, almost always more women than men. And then mm-hmm. just going through a lot of Henson stuff, that there's a lot of women on set. So I haven't had too much of a like all dudes bro experience. Mm. Um, so I don't know. This is kind of gross, but I'll say it. One of the great things about a lot of women on set is that when you have a horrible period and you've ruined your pants, <laughs> you can <laughs> you cycle together, don't you? Over time? No, we don't. But you can run up to the costume person and go, "Can you go buy me pants and underwear?" And they'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and if well, it's all dudes, you can't reel. do that. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I was going to say, you ask someone for supplies. You know? Yeah. yeah. There are other right. women there. But so, like for example, with the the you know. Disney Muppets, Muppet Studios, that I can see being more of the situation where there's obviously more of a men kind of for the the core cast, and I and and I think that's because you know that's where it started, right? It was a group of mostly men, and those characters have kind of maintained. And and you know Frank's been saying for years, and I you know we just want to create new characters, but trying to find an opportunity like what you're doing to create new characters is I think the way you can start integrating more people of color, women, and, you know, the variety with the Muppets, it's always kind of, you're in this, you know, pre-existing bubble of core characters. And I just keep trying to push for How can we just bring, can we do a little side series about, you know, a group of rats? And or, you know, just try and pull out from the tree trunk so that we can create new characters, more diverse characters, you know? Well, I think the other problem is if you only have one thing, whatever it is, Hmm. that anytime you bring something in that's different than that, they're usually um, like a tool for that main group of people or they're a accessory or and they get boxed in so if it's only male characters any women that get introduced are usually introduced as mothers or girlfriends right and it they it doesn't really give them a lot of room to be explored as characters they're usually the the nag or the straight one and it's so it's hard to enter something like that when most of the characters are sexual objects or you know so it's you need that offshoot where it can be Mm -hmm. where women don't have to be and also when you only bring in one person then if it's a if they're an idiot or a weirdo it's like your only female character is a terrible person but if there's Mm -hmm. a lot of female characters then you can have terrible people and good people and smart people and dumb people right and like with the muppet show characters there's all these pre-established relationships right yeah they, they tend to uh um, already fill the idiot void or the, you know, boring character, you know, that those combinations that if you bring in a new character, it's almost like, well, we've got that character, but, but I'm always like, just, let's just like Joe from legal, you know, yeah, it's a male character, but he popped out of, out of nowhere, you know, and, and I can see more happening with him, but it would be great to see more happy happen with, you know, Julianne's character, the Beverly Plume character. And um, so I just think it's great that you guys are doing this because I think that's what you try and hope for is characters that start to, right, that grow into something. You have you have time to build them and grow them. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. We, we talked um, a lot, of, you know, script-wise, I think what Colleen wrote so beautifully is that you know, we have all these varied characters and no one is talking about their boyfriend or their, their, you know, none of the subjects are about men. And that wasn't, I don't know if it was deliberate. It was just, we have, we have, we have full lives and sure. I mean, <laughs> brains and worlds and stuff. And so uh, to, to, to show this array. And I think we just kind of, it's, now is the best time to be a woman puppeteer. And it was before we did Glop. I mean, the opportunities are just, they're just increasing more and more. But we just wanted to sh- just remind people, and sometimes you just gotta throw it in their face. Oh, Instacart's here. Oh yeah, you just gotta, just gotta show them what's possible. So our, really, our goal was to say, you know, we're we're here, we're ready to work, and we're pretty freaking hilarious. Very, very funny. I mean, you what a group. I mean, and I, you know, I, there's like you said, there's so many, so many great performers, and and you all come from different 
Well, let's see. Well, but no, but Donna, did you start off wanting to be an actress or a puppeteer? Oh, no, I've been an actress. Well, it's, since it's I the was... same, but, but yeah. anyway, you're still <laughs> acting, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I've been uh, an actor all my adult life. I, you know, got into puppetry, you know, on more recently, but, um, well, 25 years. And... <laughs> right, I was going to say 25 years. <laughs> but no, I've I've done, you no, know, I've, um, I come from theater, actually. That's where I come from, musical theater, uh, too. From uh, Florida? Is that where you're? Uh, yeah, I moved to Florida after I got my degree and then uh, worked in TV and film and equity theater down there and then moved to Los Angeles. But I had done, I'd done a lot of multi-character work. I had done the first regional production of Lily Tomlin's show, Search for Signs. Oh my and then, gosh. And my first job in LA was as Tracy Ullman's acting double for her HBO show, Tracy Takes wow. On, which is kind of like puppeteering with the whole back half of your body. <laughs> <laughs> I had to play all of her characters and do all of her dialects, wear her prosthetics for, for three seasons wow. I did until, I, until wow. I got pregnant. Wow. So, I, just, I just reposted that great video, that song that she did a while back with where Paul McCartney shows up at the end. They don't know oh, about yeah. us. Yeah, I so really love that song. That was the opening title song, that show. So, so you, was, I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. But so you've made you continue to uh, you've you've who we just had we just had somebody else on that does um, anyway that you're doing your acting as well as the puppeteering thing oh Fran Fran Brill mm. a history you know a career of doing both and mm -hmm. finding a way to do both I just find that so interesting and I know Colleen you've yeah. also done a lot of acting and well, Alice are you acting outside of puppetry as well no I mean I I think. We, we we often say that you know puppeteers sort of get divided into two characters, two two categories: the ones that wanted to be puppeteers from the time they were little kids, and right. the ones that came to it through acting. Right, right. Uh, and I, I'm definitely. And then there's Dave Goals, who's neither. Who neither one. <laughs> this this <laughs> is. Uh, yeah, if I must, I will. Yeah. Be this is um, one of my. F oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so no, I'm definitely in the camp that that uh, didn't that wasn't ever interested in being uh, being on camera myself. Um, this is one of my favorite Colleen moments on the screen. Oh yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Can you see how pitted I am? By the way, it looks like a shadow. Both of I you and Michael Starn through that sweater. Like so. <laughs> that was my first. Uh, that got me into SAG. I got Taft Hartley on that job. No kidding. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you're from? Uh, I'm from Hawaii. Wahoo. Yeah. Oahu. Oh, is that right? Oahu. Yeah. I grew up in Honolulu, Hawaii. On Oahu. Wow. I did wow. a I did a movie years ago, and I think it was in Oahu. I I'm pretty sure, where I had to play an ape, a gorilla. And was it like very city y or was it way less populated? Well, our part was out. We were near. I believe it was this like famous mountain peak where some king, somebody is that Oahu where. That's the name of the Diamond Head? No, 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 no. This is like some something where the king jumped off or I can't I don't oh, know. I don't know. Uh, we did jungle stuff mostly, uh, because it was all gorillas. Born to be wild, right? Was that the Born movie? to be Wild, yeah. yeah. But well, I Well, Oahu's I just out. way way more densely populated than the other islands. So you would know if you were on Oahu. Like you would feel like, oh I I'm in the suburbs. It just looks like Hawaii, which is insane. <laughs> yeah, by the way, just so you guys know, Peggy Etra is watching. Oh, oh, hello, Peggy. Hello, Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Yeah. So how, she and I are in the same building. Colleen, how did you get from uh, Oahu to? Did I just call you Peggy, Colleen? No. Oh, how, uh, uh, to get to LA. Was this something that you wanted to do as a kid? Were you always interested in performing? Yeah, I always wanted to be an actress since I was little, and mm. um, I made that decision. I mean, I was going to move to LA anyway, and I pretended like I was going to go to college, but I wasn't. So um, I worked that summer and then I, I moved to LA. I flew to LA and then uh, I just never moved anywhere else. <laughs> so wow. yeah. Wow. And then how'd but, you get into the Groundlings? So uh, a friend of mine, uh, her, her boyfriend, who was a working actor, um, told me about the Groundlings and I went and I was instantly in love with it. And so I went through the program and I was super lucky. I got to go into the Sunday company, which then meant um, I got to meet all these incredibly talented people, but also more exposure to the industry and stuff like that. And then yeah. one of the people I was exposed to was Patrick Bristow, oh. who when Brian um, wanted to bring in more improvisers to teach them how to puppeteer and puppeteers to teach them how to improvise, 
uh, Patrick brought me in as somebody he knew and he liked and that kind of stuff. And also because I was tall. <laughs> I remember that. Speaking of that, you've all worked on this at one point or another, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. How yeah. is that different from other the other work that you do? This is, so I fit in the category of puppeteers who only work on non-children stuff. I mean, the thing I'm working on right now, I guess is, is, is Nickelodeon, so it's meant for kids, but I'm in the, all the things where people swear and say terrible things, <laughs> or, you know, awful people. Talk about their periods. Yeah, yeah. just all sorts <laughs> of terrible stuff. So right. and, Puppet Up is actually very similar to the most of the puppet work I do. Um, Donna and Alice have different- For me, it was, it was, it's, it was terrifying. <laughs> well, because coming from a theater background, which is very structured, you memorize lines, you rehearse, you block, you blah, blah, blah. And then uh, it's just, a, it's leaping, you know, it's leaping off a cliff and not, you know, without a net. But uh, yeah. a, and finally, I just, I just stopped worrying about it and just, it kind of got, I got better after that. But really just having fun with it, letting go, yeah. letting go of your preconceived ideas, letting go of how you want the scene to go, just letting go and just being present and listening. It's, Really hard. Mm. Huge hats off to Colleen. I mean, yeah. amazing. I I hate it too to the point where I didn't stick. <laughs> um, it's like eating glass, and it would ruin my entire uh. coming up. But I, <laughs> you know, in in spirit, uh, I think I'm uh, more. I'm gonna think I'm closer to an animator than an actor. Um, I mean, I'm very methodical, and I'm very very. Uh, specific about the small movements and I'm focused on that sort of to, to uh, the exclusion of other things. And therefore that like big free loose all over the place thing is just not my style. I, I'm the opposite of Alice. We're opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say when, when that kind of started um, and uh, I was sitting with Brian and, and Patrick and we we're talking about, you know, bringing in people who have a comedy background and are comfortable with the improvisational thing. Um, my my biggest frustration was that I I like I get caught up in character and I want to keep building that and and it's like you've got two and a half minutes to create a character to be funny to be in the moment back you know that stuff and I almost like missed like when there was something that was happening and Patrick would go okay you know I was like no we're just getting started <laughs> we're just starting to have fun you know we just got to watch long form right. improv bill then people come back and it's a whole thing well that would be good I've never I love long form that. yeah they yeah, love that I yeah. feel like Pepe has developed through improvisation like I see you improvise with him on set all uh and he just grows and develops and becomes more and more who he is every time you have months so it's almost like that's I mean, I love that character, and mm -hmm. and and he's so specific, and he's so who he is. But it's because you're improvising with him constantly. Well, I loved. I mean, I love to improvise. You know, it's it's just like there in, in like Puppet Up or that kind of situation. It feels like there are certain parameters, right? So you you know you have to get from here to here, and you know you've got to hit certain points, but still be free enough to just let it happen. And so I love improvising. I just always want more. Yeah. I wanted to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where it's, there was a, a question. I just, this is usually a question you ask at the end of the show, but I don't want to. Oh, okay, let's do this first. That's not a question. It's just a statement. Ah, thank you, Night Rider. Thank you, Night Rider. It could be an insult if this person is like. Here. Oh, Michael. Oh, Michael. Who else is here? Michael. Did oh I do, was that a good Patrick Bristow impersonation? I didn't even realize. <laughs> oh, I see. The, let's, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. So this question you usually ask at the end, but I don't want to lose it before it comes up and you get to talk about it. Uh, Renata Goats or Getz asks, so there are more episodes coming up with Glop. These so are we have one a musical episode, and then I've written more and there's the ones i wrote while i was in quarantine in uh, vancouver are very bleak i'm very excited about them. <laughs> <laughs> um so it's just a matter now of well everybody got super busy too like right. donna's had like eight jobs uh i've been in vancouver alice i think has seven jobs too so it's just a matter of when we have time. When you have time, right? Yeah, but we definitely want to. And, you know, we, we love our, our Lady Trinity of the Veils gals, but uh, but we have other stories to tell, too, so we haven't uh, quite decided. But our, we're very excited about uh, Rich is on the other side of this wall, editing madly as we speak. Uh, oh, yes. our, our final episode, which is a musical, it's longer, and 
all the characters come back for it. Awesome. It's just a taste. And our amazing composer, Angela Parrish, because we wanted a woman composer. You know, I've recorded a ton of songs here in Los Angeles for different puppet projects, but I'd never worked with a woman composer. Right. So I reached out to um, wow. a, a male composer and he uh, recommended Angela to us and she's been amazing. She did our little, yeah. our cute little opener with the logo flying in and then oh, wow. all the music throughout. What's she's her name, Angela? So Angela Parrish. Parrish. And Liz Hara wrote the episode, so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is the Instacart order okay? Did you get everything? Yeah, it's here. It's outside the door. It's no touch delivery. Eat. I so eat I'll during care. the show. You can eat if you want. Oh, so you, do you have to go through? Are you going to go through? Do you have a little ritual? No, it's it they've all, got it pretty under control here. So, oh, good, you good. know, Vancouver, you can sort of walk around without being horribly terrified. When I come home for Christmas, uh, then I'll be like masked. And <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about um, more adult themed uh, projects. You've all worked on this. Do you want to talk about this? Ah, uh, yes. Wow. Talk about naughty. <laughs> yes. I played a Dalmatian in a porno. Um, <laughs> and, and I was boy, a did cow. You him good. I, I remember I was, he was in pain, that guy. Yeah. I was that was the cow, first thing we shot on my birthday. Sorry, I was, Donna, gonna, I was just going to say, the pink character down there, I think I played her, Roxy? Roxy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. Roxy, and then I was the cow. And then uh, there are other sundry characters. Yeah, that was my first day. <laughs> Welcome to the set, Donna. <laughs> you were the cow. I was the oh. cow. And then Alice, you got you. Uh, aside from having to smell my armpit and, and deal with me all the time, you got to do some of your, your characters um, too. Yeah, Donna and I got to do the the two hookers under a bridge. That was fun. They're great. Yeah, but uh, you know, by and large, my my uh, my job on that one and it was so much fun was to just kind of figure out where you were going with things and, and go along for the ride <laughs> yeah it was uh it was interesting mm -hmm. I, I i i wish uh i wish they would have kind of stuck with uh the this the the relationships in the story more than going for the shock of it all you know i think yeah. we actually did have a a, a more interesting, fully kind of developed film that Brian intended to do, you know? Oh, Michael was one of the hooker's hands. Yes. <laughs> Mike, Mike Isn't, he always? Isn't he always, though? Right. Isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> we uh, have, that was in Santa Monica, right? The hookers on, under the mm -hmm. bridge? Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Two in the morning uh, under the Santa Monica Pier. Yeah. yeah. Um, it wasn't the first time that I felt like we shot a different movie than was edited and released. That's true. That's so true. it happens, but... Um, yeah, that one was. You really wanted to see more of that, more of that relationship. Yeah, all the yeah. dancing. There was so much stuff that I'm sad we didn't see. But that's also Bill why I like improv because no one can edit it, no one can change it, yeah. and yeah. there's no like I did this thing and then six months later a completely different thing happened. It's like whatever I want to say is there. I get well, to and, decide. And isn't that part of the fun of having your own thing that you're doing now is to be able to you know you don't have to worry about somebody else interpreting what they thought you meant. Or that yeah. you know, they believe is the best for the scene. It's this yeah, is your and notes about could they not could they be in green cardigans, not blue? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, for no reason. They just want to change something. Yeah. yeah. Colleen has Colleen said, Colleen has said, um, yeah, let's enjoy this now because if we sell the show, we're gonna start getting notes. So let's just do what we want. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Absolutely right. Uh oh, wait, sorry. Uh who oh, do you guys know Aaron? Familiar know. with Aaron Oscar? Huh? Oh, oh. oh, sorry. I was very excited at the beginning part of that sentence. I'm like, oh, maybe she can do clap, and then I finish the sentence. Oh, I know, so but I, like, I just oh, thought, no. I mean, you know, it's nice to pay respects to. Yeah, I know that name. Um, I, I don't know from from where. Oh, oh wow. very I cool. I'm just trying to. Up. Oh, oh, let's spin the wheel, Gene. All right, before we're we run out of time. Before we run out, we're going to spin. We're going to do my imaginary wheel. Okay. Well, okay. Let me tell you that there's a limited amount left over that we've uh, so. Any, anywhere between the numbers 11 and 24, and there's going to be some missing between there. So, And, and when you call out a number, I, it makes no sense. I spin the wheel, and then your number comes up. So let's start with, uh, let's start with Alice. Pick a number, please. Uh, oh, 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 all right. Wait, wait. What were, what were the oh, parameters? Between 11 and 24. <laughs> oh, 23. 23. We already did it. Um, 20. Twenty. All right. <laughs> I do this part so he can get a picture. Sorry, okay. this 
for some reason the image was really shrunken. Let me just let just pick a different number. <laughs> it's uh, the wheel is moving very slowly, and here we go. Ah, ah. Who's this little devil. This is Rose. She's a psychopath I played on <laughs> Netflix. And what I killed my program? I It's called Curious Creations of Christine McConnell. Mm -hmm. uh, I play Rose and I play a human woman. Um, and at some point, my human woman character stabs Rose in the back. That woman Ooh. character was very weird. That's so meta. Yeah, Evelyn. And uh, yes, Evelyn. people have gotten Rose tattoos. It's, I've, I've seen pictures. No of kidding. Them. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Oostrom was on too. that with you, correct? Mr. Yes, Michael was the cat, uh, Rankle. Uh, Drew Massey was um, uh, Edgar, and Morgana was Edgar's. Uh, she did, she was in the suit performing her. Didn't mm. Kirk design those? I think. Kirk, yeah, I think Kirk and, yeah, but I think Kirk and Christine kind of combo did okay. him. I'm not positive about who was right. more, more in charge, but. Right. Did you guys, Alice and Donna, did you guys work on that? At all? Part of that no. Anyway? No. Okay. no, was that during? Was, that was, was that? two years ago? And we shot it around Christmas time, I think. Oh, that might have been during. Oh, no. It was during Dark Crystal, right? Right after Happy Time? Yes, it was right during Dark Crystal. You guys were gone on Dark yeah. Crystal. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see, Donna, would you pick a number, please? Uh, 19. 19. Pick nine. again. Really? <laughs> yes. I did it. Pick again? Yeah. Pick again. Number 12. Number 12. 12. Oh, I'm just going to pretend this is 12, so I don't have to ask you to pick again. <laughs> oh, and I, what's going on with these slides? Sorry, I have to just keep blowing it up a little bit. All right. All right, here we go. This will give us something to talk about. Yeah. Oh, look at pretty Alice and Brea. Little Alice. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so exhausted in my life as when they took that photo. <laughs> <laughs> About near the, uh, it was near the end of the shoot, and they realized they could get some pictures of us with the with the characters, and that was probably the workingest time of my life. We'd gone straight from the Hollywood Bowl into Happy Time Murders into like, wow. We wrapped Happy Time Murders, and I got on a plane. Less than 24 hours later. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you kind of look like when we walked out of the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Are we allowed to talk about that now? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. That's a story that's never really been exposed. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not. Never... I just thought. Okay, you, well, I won't, know say, I won't say what the circumstances were, yeah. but Bill and I <laughs> wind up in the hospital together. <laughs> What? We don't get to know, find and out. If anybody knows this on the, do not put it on the chat. <laughs> and I won't say the circumstances that landed us there, but but Bill wouldn't stop laughing. <laughs> he would stop laughing the entire time. From the moment we walked in to the moment we left, like I could hear him. We were in separate little examining rooms. And he was just like this hysterical laughter coming down. <laughs> and he couldn't stop like before, during, and after this entire time. I think it was a head injury. I, I don't know if I was I hit my head or something. I don't know. I just I just found it so funny what, what happened to us. I, I just couldn't collect myself for hours. No, I couldn't pull it together for like the whole weekend. It's probably just yeah. nervous energy or something. I don't know. Uh, and Donna, because uh, I'm tired of hearing about this hospital story that I can't hear about. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, sorry. You got to do like a puppeteer's dream is you didn't have to puppeteer that heavy thing, but you got to be the voice. That's right. Yeah. Kevin Clash yeah. called her the Winnebago. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Literally like that. Now I got to sail into the ADR booth and sail out. No. Did you do that uh, here or there? A lot harder. Uh, it was here, yes. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's a very, uh, it's a very, it's a big role. It's a very... Uh, a role that that requires a lot. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I uh, said this before. I, I left it all on the floor. And I <laughs> cried. I sweated. I, yeah. I I cried more than once. We well, had a great <laughs> great performer to lip right to 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 add your voice to. Like I mean, I know sometimes it can be challenging timing, and you know can be very different. And and but to have somebody who's able to manipulate and and do that stuff. I think it just helps so much. I think about dinosaurs when we did dinosaurs. You know, there were certain voice actors that didn't have the kind of ability to be 
to, to be open enough to be a part of the performance to make it all one where they wanted it to be their own or they, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. mixing it to be open enough yeah. to, to find the right balance of all that is, is a, a, an art in itself. I don't think people realize the difference in great voice actors and not great voice actors. And you did amazing. She amazing. was amazing. Yeah. She, did the, she read Agra at the table read. The very, very first time they read through all the scripts, they had brought in actors, just LA actors to do those characters. Right. I was not involved in that, but Donna read Agra for that. So then did Kevin have a chance to listen and follow you to hear what you were doing? Could he? Uh, yeah, he uh, he came into the, the table read, I think one of the days, we had two marathon days and read all 10 scripts. Oh, wow. And uh, so he popped in at some point and said, yeah, yeah, lady. Yeah, good job. <laughs> and um, so, and you know, I, I knew that it had gone well and he was like, yeah, lady, I'm gonna uh, talk to them about you. Lady. you. You're doing the voice and stuff. And then and then they started shooting, he goes, hey, lady, um, <laughs> I've, got, I've got two, two Agra lines in this script. Can you send me just an MP3 of how you would read it oh, with rhythms and stuff? I good. said, sure. And then a couple weeks later, hey, lady, <laughs> uh, there's a two page scene coming up. I want to try to get you on payroll, but for you to like send me these things, because he was puppet captain of this massive puppet right. shoot. So yeah. he didn't really have you know time and he just he you know he needed um needed some inspiration. So uh so yeah, I actually was hired in during production to do pre-reads and read the scenes sending MP3s ahead. Well there you Kevin. go. That's and that's the that's why it's so great and the best way to do it is to be able to work together like yeah. that. And that's, mm -hmm. I know he did that with Frank's characters, you know, when he would have to do Piggy or Fozzie or, mm. you know, uh, wanted to do the right rhythms and to make sure you're both in sync. That's awesome. Well, there you go. So that was that's, forth with that, but uh, even right up until, I mean, it was, it was very near the end of production or maybe even after we finished shooting until they officially finally gave her the role to do. I know. I so, waited for months. <laughs> I mean, because I knew they were interested, but it was like nearly a year no after way. the table read that I finally got it. Well, I knew that they were, uh, they wanted to see, you know, they had a lot of celebrities and they wanted to see uh, if there were any celebrities who were available and interested. And luckily, Tracy Ullman was busy. So, uh, <laughs> and you know, Emma Thompson oh, was unavailable. Uh, yeah, so then I, I got it and then, uh, yeah, so that was we great. We should show this just so we can credit all these women who have worked on the films. Do you want somebody want to name them? Oh, yes. yeah. Yes. Go ahead, somebody. Who's that? Um, okay, so we'll, we'll, go, from, we'll, top go, we'll go top, we'll go top left to right. Okay, okay so that's me, uh, Donna, Louise Gold, Sarah O, uh, professional name is Sarah O. Sarang, uh, Nicolette Santino, uh, that's uh, Michelle Zamora, that's Amy Garcia. I hate saying people's names. This is giving me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alex Denise. Are you worried you're going to forget one? Like Mark? yes, uh, yeah. that's Christine. Uh, I never say her last name correctly. Pop Alexis. <laughs> Pop Alexis. Pop Alexis. <laughs> that's also Sherry. It's like I, it's Van Heuvel, right? Sherry Van 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 Heuvel. Van 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 Heuvel. Right. right. This is hard. Uh, yes, it's hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Carrera Rudolph. It is that's for me. I, I Peggy Etra. That's Morgana uh, Ignis. That's Liz Hara. That's Pam Arciero. Yeah. That's Jen Barnhart. Yeah. That's uh, Jean-Viev Flatty? 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 Another person's last name I've never <laughs> said out loud. Oh. Uh, that's Dorian Davis. And, or Davies, sorry. And that's uh, Alison Mork. Look at that lovely group. And then later came Adrian Rose Leonard and Haley Who and Gwen Hollander. Yeah. Who? Who? <laughs> Haley. <laughs> Haley, who? Haley, Haley worked on Christine McConnell, and she worked on Earth to Ned, um, mm. and she uh, she designed the pu the shadow puppets, and then Adrian did um, did the sequence. And Adrian's also a marionettist and a puppet builder and all that kind of stuff. Oh wow! Right. Yeah. So, and, do, you, do you think you'll um, uh, create or build some new characters? Do you think, or are you going to kind of stick with the ones you have and try? Well, and even if them or. Even if we keep the campfire girls, there'll be new characters in all the stories right. um, that show up. And but also, yeah, we could just scrap it and create a whole new <laughs> storytelling structure. Here's um, a question. I think it's a great one, the campfire thing. How many of those women have appeared on the Beretta Brothers? The answer, not enough, but <laughs> we'll get around to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I was on, uh, I crashed an episode of Bretter Brothers. This and is your third appearance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 One was a surprise, and then you did one of our Q&As along with Julianne. That's right. Today. So the, the only person that hasn't spun the wheel, and then we'll let you ladies go, because you've okay. been so nice that you could spend this time with us, and the Instacart is waiting. So Colleen. Uh, pick I'll pick uh, 13. 13, all right. If you insist. I cannot believe I got through naming all of those women. I'm so bad. Um, um, I didn't work on Sid the Science Kid, Donna Kimbo and Alice did, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was my first Ensign show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. 2008. No kidding. This is an example of the non-puppets puppeting that we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah. nightmare that is not HPV. <laughs> well, and you've all used the H... No, H I'm going to mess it up. H yeah. D P S. Thank you. Yes, Sister. I did it on uh, Earth to Ned as Betty, and almost what a, had a meltdown. I was gonna say almost had a meltdown. Had <laughs> a meltdown. And that's the first time you used it. Is that the first time you used it? The first time I used it, it's like learning yes, the flute in three weeks. Yeah. Um, both Don and Alice are amazing at it, and would occasionally come over and help me and soothe me and right. do things. But Talk Don, I want to give you like, PTSD, but <laughs> I'm gonna bring up this image. Yay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really rough. You're so fun when you You were Ned's hands, you were Ned's main hands, right? I were Ned's front, yes. Ned's oh, front you hands. were? And then I, were, nice. I was Claude's uh, much of the time. So I was always Ned and jumping back and forth to Claude. So I, people be sitting in the courtyard having their snacks. Not you me. Never no, never stopped. Right. Do you want right. to show one more? Do you want to show one more episode before we say? Oh, yeah, can we do that before we go? Yeah. Up? yeah. Let's yeah. Show and then, okay, we're going to. Uh, do you have, is it Love Story? Do you have? It's called I think it's a full moon. I think we did full moon. moon. Yeah. Which okay, is my favorite. Oh, okay, good. Here we go. What's that? Just a little old wolf? No big deal? Or... It's the soul of the witch, Mary Baker, who's come back to work her evil <laughs> magic. <laughs> Mary despised little girls. I despise little girls. She thought ponytails were silly. Preposterous. That skipping was foolish. What an inefficient way to get around. And that skirts left your knees vulnerable to scrapes. All children should wear pants. And so she devised a spell to send every little girl to the moon. <gasps> Try skipping in one six gravity. <laughs> She called upon her wolf friends. Their calls pulled the moon closer and closer. Till it was as big as it is now! Oh yeah? It's really big? Super huge, yeah. Soon the moon was so close it started to pull all the little girls by their ponytails. <laughs> and now, every time the moon is big like that, it means she has returned. And the moon takes more victims! So, uh, there are a bunch of girls on the moon? I don't see them. That's a problem with ponytails. How does she keep her hair out of her face? Headbands? Yeah, right. It was a good story, Wick. I'm less afraid now. You're supposed to be more afraid. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm that then. I like a skirt. More ventilation. <laughs> of how Leslie says preposterous. Preposterous. She's such a brilliant ham. That and I love that you held for her to come 
backwards and do a laugh. <laughs> always makes us laugh. Rich, Rich always yeah. giggles at that. We've seen it hundreds of times. And, yes. and she was the only one who had to do everything in one take. She couldn't, like, there were no cutaways. So she just oh, had right. to do that. My favorite part was <laughs> Leslie read it uh, wrong in the first thing. So she's like, look, guys, I made one six gravity. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, no, on the moon, it's one six gravity. And she's like, oh. <laughs> and she had a vial like, of one six gravity. Yeah, it was a Dixie cup with a rock in it, and she wrote like one <laughs> over six. like one six. Oh and we my were like, gosh. What? That's so funny. What? I remember we were, we were going through Les or her, yeah, her puppets, which one we were going to pick, and I liked that one. And Donna's like, I don't know, I think it's too clean and cute. And it's like, it's <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> you think she's not going to add 40,000 things to it? Oh, that's right. Yeah. She's like, I just got to add some more boils, and then she'll be good to go. Oh, <laughs> so Can you do us a favor before you head out? Mm -hmm. We have to re-announce the winners of our Muppet Christmas Trivia Contest, and I'm sure they're tired of hearing Billy and me speak. Um, would you read the names for us? Sure. I don't know if you want to do it together, or one of you wants to take Take How do they do that? I don't Are know. You Why don't you all three say together? But they don't all know right. the names. Zoom I'm going to put them up. I'm <laughs> or in the <laughs> private <laughs> chat, you can you can message us. And oh, yeah. Know. No, look, I've spent all this time writing the names. Oh, I see. Two cards, okay. She has a plan. Right. You're going right, to make so, me say more names out loud? Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> the winners, the two contestants for next week's Muppet Christmas Trivia Contest. Number one. Is Michael Ross. Rose, Rose. <laughs> See? Oh my God, my anxiety. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. Right. Oh my God. We're not sure if it's him. That's what I got. Out. Everybody was kind of like, Mraz? Is that who? <laughs> Mraz? I guess we'll it's it for the right. next week. Yeah. He'll be up against Joey Debley. Joe Debley. What did I say? Joey. Joey Debley. Joe Debley. I like that. Joe, Joe Debley. Hey, Joe, Joe Debley. Debley. Hey, yeah, right. hey, uh, Alice here. I'll just show you this. Thanks for stopping by, you guys. Uh... <laughs> oh, yes. I she remember the hospital. Away. Yes. That's out of the okay. bag. Now I know what that yes, story is. Yes, gave it away. Yeah. It's out there. Uh -huh. That was the only day my sister came to set, and then it was a half day. Oh, was it really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Well, thank you, lovely, glorious, incredible, fantastically talented ladies of puppetry and all guys. kinds of things. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate you coming on, and I look forward to seeing more and playing with you guys, I hope, in the near future. I yeah. any, any idea when the, the episode six, the musical number, might be out? We're about. hoping it's it's a little Christmas gift to all our uh, our new followers, but it might be a New Year's gift, and it might even be a Valentine's gift. <laughs> <laughs> what they'll have to do is keep an eye on glop.us. That's G-L-O-P dot U-S. Yes. And all we'll right. forward you all their contact information, you guys, so you can have them on the show. Personal yeah. phone numbers. Yeah. Can you send Personal them? phone numbers, or just probably just emails, you know, okay. to, that, right. that, that are screened by manager <laughs> we can only have how many eight at a time gene what's our amount that no, we I can i think only? there's 10 at a time oh, now Something we can have like 10 that. okay i think yeah. yes so, so it's we'll all right to... there's there's more than one episode that we can spread them out you know yeah, yeah. absolutely that'd be fun glop party at the oh. Brother bros love you guys love you, love you. thank you for having us nice thank nice you meet you donna and colleen alice and I yeah i know we go back nice meeting you yeah. all right, <laughs> all right so you all. Take I'm going to send you out of here. Goodbye. I'm going to click Alice. Bye, Alice. Click go away. Bye. 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 And bye. Bloop. Oh, I know. Oh, Wait. Look Alice what happened. Is still there. I brought her back. I'm still here. <laughs> Goodbye. How do we? Wait. How do we make her come here? You have to actually do kick. Yeah, I'll do it. Oh. Love you, Glops, says Jesse. Glops. The Glops. That was nice. Bill, how did you? Love you, ladies. Uh, What's this? Oh, Muppets Now season uh, two. How are the chances? Are you a betting? Well, to win the 23, <laughs> are you a gal or a guy? If you're a betting gal or a betting guy, they look pretty good. I'll just oh, say that. I'll okay. just say that. We had a nice little, uh, was it a right? What would you call it? 
um, Vulture Magazine, I think, gave us a little mention. Mm -hmm. The last season, people, it was like a fun, best things to watch in 2020. Okay, cool. Um, but I, I think not heard I of hope it. so. It's, it's oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's on Disney Plus if you get a chance, look for it. Disney, um, familiar. But good chances are, you know, what are gonna do? Who's, who's eating on the show? You know, um, I the chances are pretty good, you know. I already ate all my jelly beans. Or well, we'll jelly beans. You know, I, I'm still finding confetti from last week. Oh, you are. Yeah. Is there anything else we can, uh, just before just, we go? Uh, next week is the Christmas episode with Santa Claus and our Muppet Christmas trivia with Joe Debley going up against Michael Moroz or Moroz. He told us there was a correct pronunciation there. Give us to Michael. Spell it out phonetically if you can, so we can get it right. Is he there? And uh, the week after that is just a year-end Q and A where we're going to show lots of fun videos that go way back and uh, things like that. Um, and maybe I, I don't know. We haven't finalized everything yet, but it's going to be very loose and fun. Lots of funny videos that we haven't watched together in a while. Um, uh, Joseph says, "Hey, you guys, thank you for choosing me for the trivia. I'm so so grateful." Joseph Debley. Hey, Joe. Joey, they call you. Can we call you Joey, too? The girls called you Joey. Plug overcooked. What? Did anybody see the Swedish chef on the Game Awards this week? Oh, overcooked. Yeah. He doesn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the video game with the Swedish chef. It was, it's called overcooked. Oh, really? Let you know, yeah. Hmm. Great. <laughs> Hope it's good. Okay, here we go. What? Well, that helps. <laughs> Muraz. Muraz? Muraz. Got it right the second time, Gene. Muraz. Muraz. Not Muraz, but Muraz? Muraz. Do we say okay. the UI? Mur? Muraz? We'll get, it. we'll get it before the show. What so if we Joey, say Joey and Muraz? You'll hear from us during the week to set up, to set everything up. We have to figure out what the uh, the prize is going to be this time around. Oh yeah, Pig I haven't feet. talked about that yet. <laughs> Pig's feet, I guess, has got to be a traditional choice, and then we'll come up with something else that's character, mm -hmm. semi-character based. Yeah. Well, I loved our lovely ladies. Yes, I did too. What else? Uh, that's it, right? We're done. <laughs> 